With EA teasing a new F1 game back in March, it's got a lot of people hoping for a lot of improvements over the last game. F122 suffers from a lack of content, in-game bugs, no anti-cheat, even more bugs, an out-of-date game engine, and even more bugs, plus a handling system that's really difficult for us to come to grips with. I know not everybody races online, and some of us just want to enjoy the game and make our own team, or drive alongside our favorite driver, or just drive for our favorite team themselves. Which is why these are the things that I hope they change for career mode and my team in F1 23. First up, let's talk about career or story mode. We've always had career mode in F1 games, and I hope that EA can look back at what made some of those previous titles a lot more immersive. I'm not talking about F1 life. Nobody wanted F1 life. Nobody wanted to talk about the cars that I got. Nobody wanted to look at my future wall. The level of immersion that we got in previous titles was talking to the press, making our own contracts, and dealing with teams to try and get the best contract. If EA wanted to give us a full F1 life game style, they should look at the way that NBA 2K does their story mode. It's fantastic. It's really immersive. There's sponsors. There's a lot of different things going on. And that's the way that an F1 life should be delivered to us. For starters, I think the F1 life was a really good idea. It was just very poorly executed. At its core, we got the ability to put on some clothes, play F1 interior designer, and collect supercars that felt awful to drive in-game. But the idea of living the life of an actual F1 driver was a really good start. I would like to see the story of 2019 or 2021 come back, that style of story where we get to start in F2 and we get to work our way up to F1. We have a rival, maybe it is Devin Butler again, and we have some kind of a friend in either Casper Ackerman or Lucas Weber who wants to help us. And throughout our entire career, we are driving alongside those characters. I think that the career mode should work in two ways. One set up for the more casual driver and the other for a driver that's after a little bit more realism. Both of these drivers should have the ability to complete a story or just jump into F1. For the casual, I would give them the option to play the story or start their career from any point and drive for whoever they want. Let them have the freedom to literally just run a season with current performance cars driving alongside their favorite driver. No worrying about upgrades, no team goals, just them driving and having a fun season. Now, for the person who's after a little bit more realism, they would have to start in F2. They would complete a story similar to, like we've said, 2019 or Breaking Point. And depending on how well they actually did in those key scenarios and the final race at the end of the story, that determines what teams are actually interested in them going forward. They wouldn't be allowed to just go through the story and not do too well and then drive for Red Bull or Ferrari. If they do really well, maybe a top team's interested, but if they don't do very well, they are only going to get looked at by lower teams. I think the quote-unquote career mode needs to actually focus more on the driver themselves and not put so much of a focus on the driver making the upgrades for the team. If they wanted to in this career mode, give them the option to make suggestions for where the car should go. If they think they need more downforce or a chassis upgrade or something with the power unit. And if they're driving well, the team is more likely to respond to what their suggestion is. Now, if we aren't driving well, the team shouldn't look to any of our suggestions for the way that the car should go. And it should be something that our teammate is potentially putting. Now we could get lucky and our teammate wants the same thing we do, then great. But if they want something completely different and we're not driving well enough, the team's just going to ignore us. Contracts is another thing that is kind of in our hands up to a certain point. Yes, if we get a couple of contracts, we have the ability to choose which team we would like to drive for. But for the realism racer, instead of just picking our team, depending on how performance in the story mode or our on-track performance while we're in F1, that should be the determining factor as to which teams we get the ability to make contracts with going forward. If we're doing well and we give good press answers, depending on which team wants us, then sure, give us the chance to run for a top team. But if we're not performing well and we're retiring the car, then maybe we have the opportunity to get completely dropped and don't have a chance to be in F1 anymore. I think giving players a little bit more depth on the contract side and maybe taking away some of their duties as race engineers and developers on the actual driving side kind of makes for a little bit more of an F1 lifestyle of career mode. And I think this would make it a lot more enjoyable for everybody to play. My team has been a crowd favorite and a favorite of mine since it was introduced in 2020. We play team owner, driver, lead R&D guy, absolutely everything. And at first, everything seemed like it worked well. But as the years have gone on, we haven't been given any major upgrades to the system. So here's what I would like to see change for my team. Let's just briefly take a moment and remember something about my team. 
we're a completely brand new team. We have a whole bunch of money to spend, and in previous games, we only had two ways to spend it. I understand that in F122, we had the chance to be a front-running team or a midfield or a starting team, and that kind of determined how much money we had. But at its core, we were allowed to spend our money on two things, the engine and our teammate. And after all is said and done, depending on how much money we have, then we can spend money on our resources to upgrade our team personnel. I would like to see way more flexibility in what we spend our money on. Do we want to save money and design everything in-house from our engine itself to the car? Then that's cool. We save money that way and maybe we can get a better teammate. But what if we want it to be a full sister team? I think the idea behind giving players the option to change their car around and change the front wing and change the side pods or the chassis and actually change the rear wing, as well as which engine we want to take, would give us so much more freedom and flexibility. I understand that we would have to build in some kind of money system because if we wanted to be a sister team, we would have to be using our money instead of buying an engine and paying for a teammate. We would then have to spend those resources to be getting these parts from the team. I don't know how in-depth we would be able to go with the different parts of the cars. I think looking at it from the outside, my thought is that the designs for the side pods, the designs for the wings, they're all in the game at a core. So if we could just pick that we wanted to put A, B, and C and make one car, I think we should be able to do that, including steering wheels. It would be really cool to be able to actually change the steering wheel that we have to look and drive with. Now that we've picked our car out and we've decided which engine manufacturer we want to go with and we found our teammate, we're still going to have to deal with our sponsoring. And I can't understand why EA hasn't given us proper sponsoring for all of the liveries that we get to create. I am so sick and tired of running Slingshot as my main sponsor. Let's be honest, EA has a lot of money and they even paid to have us have branded clothing inside of the game, which was really cool, but we could never use the branded clothing on our liveries. I think the best thing that EA could do is implement the same kind of system as the Need for Speed series, where you have your car and there's a livery editor if you have that car or if you're dealing with that car. And people can go and people can make their own liveries and then they can upload them and people can download them and just run them. If that was in the actual F1 game, I know that may take away from some of the modding community, but I think it would make it a lot more accessible from anybody that doesn't understand modding and how a modding actually works. The last thing we need to talk about in terms of my team, I think is the actual upgrade system and the way that the upgrade tree works. Maybe something like Motorsport Manager where you need to build more than one part to have it running on both cars or hiring individual staff as opposed to the department ranking system that can feel like it takes forever to upgrade. The upgrade system needs work. But honestly, I don't play it enough to tell you exactly what it needs. I felt like it's been the exact same for the last three cycles of the game with like maybe some UI changes. Lastly, to kind of tie everything together, I would really, really love to see the ability to fully customize our season. Just not in length, but to actually pick the tracks that we want to race in whichever order we want to race. It's something that I feel is so small, but would make everybody's life so much better. Leave it in the comments below. What do you think needs to change specifically with the career or story mode or my team going forward to help revitalize the F1 series that EA has taken over from Codemasters? Thank you guys all so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys down the inside on the next one. Take care.